You guys ever wanted to have a cheap solution to doing multi-zone video throughout your house or known as doing a matrix video throughout your house, especially doing that over Cat5 or Cat6 so you don't have to worry about running HDMI cables? This may be a really cheap solution. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I just did the video over the Arillic LP10s and I'm loving them. Uh, really great options and then I saw YouTuber Cameron Gray, I think everyone knows him now, he's doing great, uh, has some great things he's been showing off. He was showing off the, I believe it was the Biamps, multi-zoned amplifiers that are interchangeable cards, all that cool stuff. It's like, man, those are awesome, those are cheap. One thing I don't like is Matrix Video. It is a very expensive thing to get into. Um, I think the one like he chose, which is a really great option, is the uh, Oreo or whatever, Orion, or however you pronounce it, it's OR something. Uh, they're like $1,600 for an eight by eight matrix, if I remember right, and that includes eight uh, Cat6, or what I should say, HD base T uh, receivers with the main transmitter, which would be the matrix. That comes with all of them. You just use a standard network cable, uh, so Cat5 or Cat6. This is so far looking like a better option. So if you ever look into Savant, Savant is a company that primarily does really expensive, like multi-million dollar homes that have the fancy automation set and everything where you want a system that just works. Well, that's what Savant is made for, even though a lot of people actually don't like Savant. Uh, from a lot of things I've heard from installers is they don't like Savant because it has a tendency to just break for no apparent reason. So luckily people go through and rip out old Savant hardware. This is, as you can see by the front of it, something from Savant. It is one of their older ones. This is an eight by eight matrix that's over HD, that works over HD base T. So this is completely compliant with the HD base T standard. It doesn't use their own proprietary standard. So that means in theory, you can just use any HD base T receiving module off of this thing. This is a true eight by eight matrix. So that means every single eight input works with every single eight output. So these things are very affordable. It is rack mountable and a standard rack. So you have a standard ear spacing right here. I believe this is a 3U in height. I never actually fully checked, but it looks to be 3U. So sleek brushed aluminum or brushed steel case. I'm pretty sure it's just steel. And then on the back, the business end. So this is where you have all your inputs to all of your outputs. So at the very bottom, on this bottom row, you have all your inputs, so you have eight HDMI inputs, and then you can see there's a coaxial RCA next to it. So you can tell it's coaxial because it has the orange ring in it, and it also states that if you can see it. And so that is for audio out. So that allows you to also not only matrix video, but you can matrix the audio that is associated with those videos coming out. And it's so, on top of all that, you also have your outputs here, eight total ones. These ones are special though, so I'm gonna shift that sideways so I can look forward and give you a better idea. So these have the absolute bog standard thing that you would expect. You have your link connection for your HD base T, and then you have your IR ins and outs. So this actually works as a two-way IR. That is something that's not quite too standard. Um, a lot of these are the receiver on the other side is your IR receiver as well. So that would receive your remote signal and then it would have a transmitter coming out or an IR blaster is what they call them that will blast into your receiver or set top box, whatever you want. But this is different. This has got two way it works. So you can have a receiver and transmitter on one side and on the other side. So it works as a full complementary pair. So that way, if you need to send a remote signal from wherever you have this thing stored, you can do that. You can also send because it is just a voltage signal because it's well, just IR signal. You could even, if you really wanted to, send an IR signal through this, through like a converter box that you could build with like an ESP32 or something with Home Assistant and be able to send your IR signal straight through that cable over there as well. Now, there's two more special features I like about the Savant over all other HD base T standards. One of them being is a very simple RS-232 jack. That just basically means that you can control each one of those receivers and talk to them. On the other receiving end of the receivers, they have an RS-232 control port on them where you can control them, but these allow you to control all of them from the main matrix. 
but there's an even more special rare thing that has not I've not seen on any other one and that's this little lamb jack now you may be thinking okay maybe it just wants a land for the actual individual matrix card in here because these are cards that are in here um, but no what that land actually does is that is a land pass through that passes through over with the HD base T standard over to the other end and so that allows you to send not only your HDMI signal, but a network signal to your same TV or whatever you have on the other side. That's something personally I haven't seen on any device yet. It's a standard I really like, even though these are very proprietary and very annoying, but whatever, these are the older ones too. So that's something that's really great. And if we move along to the other side, so you can see you have all eight here. Like I said, if you open up this case, which I did, voided the warranty, whatever it's used, uh, each one of these is a card in here. You can get these all the way from a four by eight to the full eight by eight. I chose the full eight by eight because the price difference really isn't much. It's like 50 bucks difference. Um, and then over on this side, you've got your power and you've also got RS-232 and LAN on there as well. Now the LAN is actually for controlling the matrix. That allows you to have full control over the actual matrix. Something I really like, something that I haven't seen yet. So. Um, because a lot of these matrix matrixes work off the principle if you needed to use an RS-232 or if they do have a LAN, it's a proprietary lockdown software. These actually have a built-in API that they run off of. Uh, it's exposed over Telnet. And so you actually have two different Telnet interfaces with these. You have your standard Telnet off of port 23. And that is your basically to get into the root access of this, you get into the shell and everything. So if you need to do a hard software update or move files manually, you can. It is very stripped, very basic. I forget who they're, I think they're using U-Boot if I remember right. So there's not much availability of options. But that also exposes the other Telnet shell, or not the other Telnet shell, but the other Telnet interface, which that's on port like 8096, I think. I remember off the top of my head. And that is allows, allows you to control the full matrix over Telnet. Now, something to be warned of is that is an exposed telnet of just a conversion of the RS-232 signal. So it is a little buggy. It is a little weird. Uh, I will show you, because I have fully integrated this with Home Assistant already. I will show you what I've had to do to circumvent most of it, but every once in a while I still have problems. So I'm still working on that. So if anybody watching, once I show off how it works with Home Assistant, I will give the link because it works through Node-RED on Home Assistant. If anyone wants to try to figure out a little better, less buggy way of doing it, by all means, go for it. I try to do the absolute basic to get it working and try to make it reliable-ish, but it gets finicky. Uh, sometimes the Telnet interface, it likes to just stop working. It'll change the input, say it does, and then all of a sudden, like out of, it'll show, I have only got four fingers each hand. So out of like, if you had four by four, if you wanted to go one to one, it would show that and then all of a sudden that line would disappear because it's an actual line it draws on the mapping because this if you, it actually has a network interface over the network you can also see a web page you'll see that line will connect and then all of a sudden it disappears and then from these other like four maps down to the other ones like it's weird it gets really buggy and weird uh, the only way i found to fix that is hard restart it which is something that i've worked on so getting into probably the most important part is the price point these by themselves because they are stripped uh, out of an old house people sell them used you can get them for as little as 150 dollars that doesn't include the actual receiving ends but that's fine they're each one you can get this for about 150 average is about 200 to 220 i got this one for about 160. Um, the receiving ends each one cost about 50 bucks and they are just a standard hd base t receiver so these are and technically these are cross compatible as far as everything I've read in the documentation and everything, they are cross compatible. There's nothing that states that they don't. Bear in mind that it took me a little bit of work. I actually had to leverage with ChatGPT to find the original document on this because they have a newer version that whenever you try to look up the model number of this, it always pulls up the new one. It's really annoying. So I will leave a link to the document that I have pulled up. Um, some, I don't know where it's hosted off of. It's hosted their Amazon web server somewhere. Somebody did it, so it's come in handy. Anywho, but that's how it generally works. Now onto the most important part, which we were just talking about, the receivers. Got one right here. 
this is all they are. They're a chunky little thing. So they make these as receivers and transmitters. So you can do a point to point if you want, if you don't want to use a matrix. Best thing to bear in mind is the transmitters will actually list the model number on the top is one thing to say. And then the naming difference is a transmitter's HTX, starting of the model number. These are HRX, so TX and RX, transmit, receive, you know the difference. So these are all they are. They come with mounting plates, so you can mount them to your wall, which is really nice to have. Uh, on the main input side, you have your link and you have five volt DC in. That's the number, that's the other big difference between the uh, transmitter and the receiver. The transmitters are 12 volts DC and it is a bigger barrel jack because they need more power because they are transmitting. And on the link one, they're all the same. Everything else looks the same. Only other difference is it says HDMI in, not HDMI out. Besides that, identical. So one of the other amazing things of these, which works with the pretty common with the HD base T standard is the power over cable. So you run one cable from this to the receiver and these are all powered off of the main matrix. So you can have all eight of these powered off the main matrix and you don't need to worry about trying to pick up power at the other end. Because if you've ever done networking and home video installs, which that's what I do, oops, my bad. That's what, we, what I do as a business um, on the side of my main job as an electrician. That's what I like to do. And you run out of outlets really fast. I mean, it stacks up fast. So I love the fact when they do power over cable and the fact that you can actually send a LAN out. And for all I know, I haven't fully checked this yet and I could be wrong, but everything I've read in the documentation states that that is a LAN pass through that it works as. And I don't believe there's any sort of real brains inside of this that has like a telnet interface and all that, but I will have to fully check for certain. But as far as I am aware, that is a straight LAN pass through. But yeah, on the backside, you have your IR in and out. It'll state it on the top and on the back, IR in and out, HDMI out, LAN and RS-232. So these do get a little warm. They're very vented and they're like hefty. They're like a pound each. So they're dense little things. But, and then I probably should have pointed this out too. It says link status right here. So that's a red and green LED. It's a bicolor LED. So it's red when the link is down and green when the link is up. And usually as soon as you plug it in, it takes a second, not even, and the link is good. So it works great, works easy. I love them. Um, this has so far been one of the best budget matrix options out there. So, I mean, if you get this for 200 bucks, it doesn't include shipping. If you get it for 200 bucks, maybe you'll find something that will include shipping for you at 50 bucks a piece. I mean, eight of them. So you're at 400 plus the 200, you're only at $600 for a full eight by eight zone matrix. And these are good up to, I believe 300 meters is the actual rating of each one of these. So, which is in accordance with the HD base T standard. Now these do recommend, when you look at the link, they are the full metal jack, they're not plastic. They do recommend you use a shielded cat five E or cat six cable. Uh, for the main reason of signal integrity. I have noticed every once in a while when you first connect, so when you first map an input to an output, the actual receiver will stutter a little bit, like it'll blank the screen for a second, connect, and it'll do it like one to three times. Typically it only happens twice. And then after like five, 10 minutes, it'll do it again. And then all of a sudden it just stops doing it and it just connects. So I don't know if that's a signal integrity problem in the cable that just, it ends up sorting itself out or if it does some weird mapping protocol where it just figures out the cable. I don't know. I don't know the full details of how they actually design their systems. So I will say though, on the management interface of this, which we will go through and look at, I'll do this as a two part video. This is a hardware demonstration. I will do a full software demonstration in a second video because it is a lot to cover. I don't want to make a hour long video over this. I don't have the time to edit that. So the one thing I do love is on the software of this, when you actually go through and look at each of these, when they connect, you can go open the status of them and it'll actually state how long the cable is. So it'll state if it's a sub hundred foot cable or whatever. And so you can see exactly how long the cable is and you can do a test on that cable to check the signal integrity across that cable. It'll give you an idea if there's something wrong with your cable or not. So as long as you use good quality cable or if you're using patch cables, as long as you're using good quality patch cables, I mean, if you're gonna do this within, you know, 50 or so feet, I'd say just go ahead and buy like a 50 foot cat six shielded patch cable. So you don't have to worry about crimping the end of it yourself. And there you go, it's good and easy. 
So I told you my, and then back to the beginning of where I started on this saying that there was the problem with Telnet on it, where it would just stop responding. Easiest solution I found is this, let me grab it. So I didn't actually have a smart plug. So I just built this. It's just a simple cord grounded, obviously with a TP link Casa smart switch and an outlet. And so basically I have written the, I have designed the node red flow basically where it's going to try to resend the command to connect three times. If that fails, it's simply just going to turn this thing off, turn off power to this hard reset it, wait five to 20 seconds. I ended up changing it to 20 just to try to get it to respond better. And then once it turns it back on, it'll wait another 70 seconds. So it will take a while to come back up. You'll be at about a full minute for it to come back up. Uh, it'll take another 70 seconds and then retry sending again. And so it does three rounds, checking if it'll connect, won't. Power cycle this, wait a total of, once you get through all the delays, it ends up coming out to a total of about 80 seconds of delay. And usually it comes right back after, after the first retry after power cycling. Works no problem, but like I said, it's got weird bugs, it's got weird problems. If somebody wants to just write a full custom node red node to handle these, that would be great. Um, personally, I don't have enough experience or time on my hands to do that. So this has been the easiest solution so far. And I don't want to go through and pick apart the API protocol to figure out exactly why it's doing it, because there is going to be a reason or somewhere in the TCP IP chain that's going, handing it over to Telnet. There's some, I think, character loss or something that confuses this, and then it just bricks itself whatever but yeah so these are a great solution to a matrix system that you want in your home personally i want this because i'm actually getting ready to buy a new house i'm going to go over that in new videos because i have to do the main main things you're going to need audio networking video and uh there's one other topic i always forget about but at least the three main things there's a fourth but those are all things that you need all things that you're going to want so, so lighting, audio, video, and networking. Those are the four main categories. So I will do a video soon over going over that, but this will at least cover the video. Eventually I will order and get a BiAmp one because they are really cheap as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I will showcase in the next video how to actually connect and set everything up. But without further ado, Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next one.